Welcome to this service of Holy Communion. Whether you are new to St Mary's Church or a regular, whether you come from near or far, you're very welcome to this online service of worship. Next Sunday there will be a service in the building of St Mary Magdalene Church and it will be led by our newly married vicar, Toby. You're most welcome to attend, but do sign up to make sure you've got a space reserved for yourself and don't forget to bring your face mask. But we will also have our usual online service at the same time. Our website gives many details of church opening times and other events and advice, so do look online and look at our Today Sheet. You may have heard the sad news that our diocesan bishop, Bishop Peter, has been diagnosed with leukaemia. He will be starting his treatment immediately and will be off week, work for several weeks. Our prayers are with him and with his wife Jane at this time. You can now follow this service on the screen below the screen you're just looking at if you're looking at me. Our opening hymn this morning is Lord of All Hopefulness, which is so appropriate in these difficult days. Do sing along with our choir. mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Together we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed 
and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the special prayer for today, the Collect for the Ninth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your Church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sasha will now bring us our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel according to Matthew. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Sasha, for braving the elements, a wonderfully appropriate place to do the reading with the raging waters behind you. And well done for speaking over them. Our opening hymn was Lord of all hopefulness. Hope is a vital ingredient of life, but hope is always to do with the future. We hope things will get better. We hope the coronavirus will fade away. Or we hope for a good death and for heaven. Hope keeps us going, especially when life is tough at the moment. But because hope is to do with the future, it doesn't change the present. We need faith for that. For instance, we have just heard the Gospel reading describing Peter getting out of the boat onto the waters of the Sea of Galilee. He would not have been helped by hope. He didn't think, gosh, I hope this is going to work. No, he needed faith, and that comes from hearing the Word of God. He heard Jesus say, come. Faith, you see, believes that word and acts upon it. So Peter heard it and followed. He believed Jesus and stepped out of the boat. And that is faith. And that is why he was able to walk on water. The reason he then starts to, sh to sink was that he shifted his faith from Jesus and his word and instead looked at the waters and waves and started to believe his own reason. Reason said he would sink. Jesus said he would walk. He started with Jesus and ended with reason. 
We are called to live by hope in the future and faith in the present. What we need when we go out into a coronavirus infected world, apart from our masks, social distancing, hand sanitizers, and any other precaution, is faith, not hope. I'm not hoping for the best, I'm believing for the best. That belief is based on the words and promises of God. I do not believe it will bring him glory, which is, after all, the whole purpose of our lives, for me to die or be seriously impaired for the rest of my life by the virus. I therefore resist it in the name of the Lord. I trust in more than my face mask, hand sanitizer, social distancing and extreme caution. I trust in him who is in me rather than he who is in the world. I take all the care I can, but I will not be afraid. I think of Psalm 91 and its words of encouragement, words that induce faith. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. I don't believe these verses just because they're in the Bible, but because they chime in with the very nature of God. The psalm puts into words what I believe God is like, its authority and power comes from the fact that God says it, not just because it's a biblical text. Indeed, it was this very psalm that Satan quoted and twisted when tempting Jesus to throw himself off the pinnacle of the temple. He quoted verse 11 from Psalm 91. For he will give his angels charge of you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Here is an instance of scripture being misused. Jesus retorted, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Indeed, all my life is based in an active and believing dependence upon the goodly hand of the Lord. This will not necessarily defend me from persecution or hardships, but it will defend me from futile accidents. I need not be subject to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, as William Shakespeare put it. Having said that, of course, if I start getting presumptuous, or if I let my walk with the Lord and let sin overtake me, then I am once again vulnerable. Our God is not just a concept, an idea, a system of belief. Nor is our God only one who draws alongside us in our troubles and infirmities, yet is unable to do anything more than comfort us. Our God is living and active and powerful. He is master of all he surveys. He is sovereign over his creation. We can rightly claim his protection, but we need to be fully persuaded of this. A doubting, half-hearted belief will achieve nothing. Conversely, this is not going out with a cavalier attitude, presuming that nothing can harm us. That could be a cover for irresponsibility and carelessness. No, walking in the midst of danger means that we should take seriously the danger and yet put our trust in God and his promises and his protection. So, Let's return to Peter walking on the water. All was well as he stepped out of the boat. His faith in the word of Jesus was without doubt. He started well. 
But then doubt flooded in, and he started to sink. But even then noticed that God did not abandon him to his fate. No, God in Jesus immediately stretched out his hand and saved him. All through our Christian lives, God, our Father, is trying to stretch our faith. One trial after another will befall us for the very purpose of testing and strengthening our faith. So let's not curse our luck or complain bitterly at our misfortune. The very things that we don't want in our lives may be the very things that God has sent. Whatever it is, we must learn to rejoice in all circumstances. Everything is an opportunity to glorify the Lord. As James put it at the very start of his epistle, count it all joy, my brethren, when you meet various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So, when things go wrong, when we can't go on our Spanish holiday, or even if we did and then had to return unexpectedly without warning to 14 days quarantine, how do we react? Let us praise God, rejoice in all circumstances, do as we're told, quarantine ourselves, but then see what God does. Like Peter, we will start to learn to walk on water rather than sink into it. We will walk through this troublesome world as overcomers, as conquerors. We will not be overcome. Amen. We now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in his Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Richard will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Faithful God, we pray for the gift of deeper faith in you. May we trust you in a way that alters our dependence on everything else. We trust you to give us a clearer vision for the direction of the church. Remind us that it is your church, not ours, here to do your work through your power and to bring forward your kingdom. When we are afraid, Lord, reach out your hand. Faithful God, we call to mind the stormy areas of our world, the raging and the insecurity, the confusion and bewilderment, the restlessness and sometimes the fear. Particularly today, our hearts go out to the people of Beirut as they struggle to cope with those injured and the many thousands of families whose homes and livelihoods have been destroyed. We remember that Lebanon, despite its own problems, is a country that gives shelter to over one and a half million refugees. We also hold before you now our own Bishop Peter, his wife and family, and those who will need to step into his role while he goes for treatment. When we are afraid, Lord, reach out your hand. In our own storms of life, when we let one another down, when we mishandle opportunities, when we come to the end of our tether, when we are afraid, Lord, reach out your hand. Faithful God, we place into your loving keeping all those who have died. Have mercy on them. Call them to come across the water. And at this time we give thanks particularly for the lives and service of Harold Tucker, the Reverend Eddie Hethcote and Winifred Dunn. We thank you for their gifts to the world and we ask that those left behind on earth may know the comfort of your mercy. When we are afraid, Lord, reach out your hand. 
And so we take a few moments to quietly reflect on the days just past and the week to come. Faithful God, whose promise stands sure, we thank you for your patience with us and your refusal to give up on us. May we hear your words through the wind and storm. Take courage. Do not be afraid. Come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Richard. We come now to the peace, and although we are absent from one another physically, we are united by the Spirit of God. We are the body of Christ, and the one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We now bring the gifts to the, the altar or the holy table. Saying together, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King. Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because on the first day of the week he overcame death and the grave and opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his commands, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Now let us draw near with faith as we say together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Come now to receive the bread and the wine, and although we cannot receive the outward and visible signs of the sacrament, that is, the bread and the wine, we can, by faith, with thanksgiving, receive the inward and spiritual benefits. So when I offer each element to you, please respond with the word, Amen. You will then have received the benefits that Jesus won for you. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The post-communion prayer. Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Together, Father of all we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our closing song before the blessing and dismissal is Glory to God. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were, and now you're reigning.
Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>